in Ottawa with Salah Basamala. Basalama. 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 I have to repeat that and get it right. Salah, what do you do here in Ottawa? I'm uh, an associate prof uh, at the School of Translation and Interpretation, uh, uh, University of Ottawa. And um, I mainly teach theories. I, in fact, mm -hmm. I, I teach them uh, at the uh, uh, BA level, mm -hmm. uh, the MA level, and I do also the PhD seminar. So translation theories. Translation theories all the way. Okay. Any particular translation theories? Well, um, in the um, in the BA program, we I mainly give the, the prescriptive theories, and of really a varied choice. And we end the the, uh, the end of the course with uh, with you know a broad the overview of the um, DTS. Mm -hmm. the system in Descriptive DTS. translation studies. Right? That's right. Okay. That's okay. right. That's undergrad. And That's then, undergrad. Yeah. And the uh, MA seminar, I, I give you know the some basic uh, primary sources of translation studies, starting with uh, you know with um, uh, you know the German Romantics, Schleiermacher, okay. and right. so on and so yeah. forth. We go through uh, many connections. In fact, in the humanities and social science, looking at you know, the connection between translation studies and anthropology, translation studies and literary theory, translation studies and philosophy, translation studies, and, okay. and so on and so forth. So, so it's not straight, it's not prescriptive no, it's studies, no. and it's not always designed to help people be better translators? Do you not think? at all. Okay. Uh, but uh, we always um, rely on the... Uh, experience that they may have in translation if any and um, we admit people who come from diverse mm -hmm. uh, you know disciplinary horizons uh, linguistics of course comparative lit uh, and so on and so forth so uh, you know it's a it's an introduction to translation studies per se you know after the cultural turn uh, usually but also with some uh, uh, some texts that you know uh, may have been published mm. before. We we read, you know, George Steiner, you know, and so on. And okay. Yeah. Do you think that's a good argument though? The theories don't connect with practice. No, because we we demonstrated all the time that there is a that there is a connection. You know, that there is a dialectics going on. By the way, we read uh, the very interesting uh, dialogue that uh, went on between Chesterman and Wagner. Mm. So. It's a, it's a very oh, about translation at the word face. Exactly, and, uh, exactly. Yes, so, uh, you know, Emma Wagner starts by saying, you know, um, professional translators uh, usually say that theory is is absolutely useless. And she, do you think that the, the, the status of theory has changed a bit, that we teach it better, perhaps, or we've learned to make it closer to actual practice? Well, um Depends. Uh, in fact, uh, we need to also to redefine the notion of practice. If a practice uh, is constrained into the uh, the definition of what a professional translator mm -hmm. does, mm -hmm. then uh, it would be very narrow. But I think that uh, uh, cultural practices, uh, you know, uh, uh, intercultural communication uh, and, and, and okay. beyond, you know, are things that we think over uh, in graduate studies uh, and okay. we try to see how, for example, different uh, um, theories that have been uh, borrowed from uh, neighboring disciplines may work in terms of, you know, uh, uh, for the purposes of uh, thinking the, the different um, uh, applications of what translation may be. Good. So you're doing more than just train a narrow professional translator. In graduate studies, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. We are okay. we are forming researchers. Right. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Good. So where were you when you were 23, 24 or so? I was in uh, I was in uh, France uh, finishing my uh, finishing my BA because I I, I got delayed because of the uh, you know, uh, I was a little bit re rebellious. Where were you from? First of all? I was born in Geneva, Switzerland, and oh, really? uh, started the university 
at the University of Geneva okay. under uh, the tutelar uh, figure of de Saussure, which was so um, oppressive in uh, you know in, in literary uh, wait a minute, studies. Wait a minute. You were not Saussure's student. No, I'm You're not, not that old. <laughs> no. <laughs> But, no, but because Saussure had such an impact yeah, and such a systemic you know, influence, yeah, absolutely, yeah. on on the different um, uh, uh, literary studies that we had in. in so Geneva. Were you studying literature? Or? I was studying French literature. Okay, and uh, it was only about structuralism. Yes. So, so I I needed to to you know to kind of uh, see more various horizons in in literature. And then you moved to. I moved to uh, Sorbonne in mm. Paris, and that's where I had the greatest choice possible. Mm. And I was exactly as uh, Pascal Casanova would say, I was in the center. In the in center the, there. Right. What years were they? These were uh, ninety. 92, 94. Okay. Yeah. So you weren't studying translation then? You were doing no, literary I wasn't. studies? No, I absolutely right? literary studies, and I had a minor uh, in, in, in Geneva uh, in, in philosophy. Oh. So, um, you so know, how did you get into translation? I got into you? translation when I had a, an experience uh, of teaching French in a faculty of translation in uh, King Saud University mm -hmm. in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, and um, uh, after you know trying to get a, a scholarship from there, I finally uh, got one from the Embassy of, of France, who sent me back to uh, to Lyon, uh, where uh, Daniel Gilles was my uh, was. Oh teaching. really? Oh <laughs> he really? He taught me theories of translation. Oh in really? Lyon Absolutely. Okay. okay. And uh, I remember he was a, a fierce critic of uh, of Ezit's uh, theory at that time. Then he became a professor as he, at Ezit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you speak Arabic? I do speak Arabic. Yes. And I so, did have a, an experience uh, in translation in yeah. Saudi Arabia, and that was a great training for me to, you know, to kind of. Um, uh, improve my Arabic. Okay, so we, we got you in Lyon with Daniel Gilles. How did you get from there to to Ottawa? What, what well, happened? Uh, I was looking for a job back in Geneva, and uh, because my parents were still living there, but couldn't find anything. So my dad got me um, uh, an internship in the World Intellectual Property Organization okay. in Geneva. Yeah, there I discovered the. Um, the incredible and uh, new world for me, the other side of the book, the legal side. Mm. So mm. copyright was totally unknown to me mm. and I discovered what, what it was and uh, so much so that I applied for a scholarship at that time that uh, the wife was go giving and, uh, and I was accepted. So I traveled with my family uh, to Concord, New Hampshire, in a very reputed school of, uh, of law, mm -hmm. and I got an M, uh, a master degree in uh, intellectual property law. And uh, during my stay there in New Hampshire, I uh, got to vi to to visit Montreal because it was about four hours or four hours and a half by car, and I met again the person whom I got to know in Lyon during my master degree. And it was Alexinus. Mm, he was, okay. in fact, teaching Was in Alexi in, in Lyon? No, he, he, he spent a few months of his uh, sabbatical in Lyon. Mm. And I, I just fell in love with this guy. Uh, he was brilliant. And intellectually, I believe. I, absolutely. In love, yes. I intellectually but, in love, definitely. <laughs> So, um, but he, he was such a great person as well. I, I really admired him as a person. And, um, and uh, then, uh, so I went to, to see him and I was kind of very apologetic of, about the fact that I, I kind of went astray, you know, out of translation studies. So I told him that I'm doing a master in law, you know, I'm so sorry about that. And so on. And he told me, what? You have a perfect combination, mm. you know, between translation studies and intellectual property law 
to you know tackle the topic of translation rights. Yes. Yeah. And I said, oh, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there was the beginning of the project of doing my PhD with Alexinos in Montreal. Mm -hmm. I was never dreaming of going so far. You know, for me, it's just you know thinking about. You know, when I was in Lyon, you know, going to Montreal is just like going to Melbourne. Mm. So I, you know, I wasn't even thinking about. It. But then I was there in Montreal, sitting on a terrace uh, with uh, Alexi, talking about this project. You know, I got very, very enthusiastic. So that was your PhD. That's then, why it okay. was my PhD, translation okay. rights, and uh, and uh, that's uh, the title of, of my my book. You 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 argue that that the copyright system, as it works, restricts the free circulation of knowledge. Yes, I do. That 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 it's not working to protect anybody. It's working to build up Western hegemony. I do. Is that a fair summary? I, I, fair? I do believe so, and mm. because because it's exactly the contrary of the spirit of what translation should be. Uh, translation is exactly, you know, it's uh, bridging cultures, uh, you know, uh, engaging communication with other people, civilizations, uh, you know, uh, and uh, frames of reference. So mm -hmm. uh, for me, it doesn't match, uh, or at least uh, the international copyright law needs to be definitely, uh, you know, revamped. So it's not just a question of protecting authors and translators and making sure they get paid for you. I mean, people will defend copyright regimes in, in those terms. Yes, yes, so, of course. It's not about that. It, it's about uh, it's about knowledge. It's about education. I think mm -hmm. those are the yeah, particular okay. areas that I'm, you know, uh, very interested in to to have them open and, and not restricted by mm -hmm. copyright. Today you gave a very interesting talk on hegemony within translation studies and, and you presented certain discourses as being marginalized. Um, do you really believe that? Do you feel marginalized because you want to do a philosophy that's, that goes beyond standard, more restricted concepts of translation? Well, do you think it's that bad? Well, I don't think it's that bad, but uh, what I think is that uh, today, uh, the uh, if we look at the, the, the types of uh, research production that we have in translation studies, what we definitely can uh, see is, is uh, you know, the huge proportion of, uh, you know, of case studies and, you know, mm -hmm. This conference and so many conferences, you know, are proof of that. It, mm -hmm. We just listen to, you know, case studies. Mm -hmm. The conceptual reflection, uh, I think, is 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 being rare, not fairly, I think, represented. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can see books, you know, being uh, written, published, uh, and so on. Uh, more and more that, you know, kind of uh, explore new horizons in translation studies, which is fantastic. But in terms of, I think, research, uh, and especially in academia, I, the, you know, um, the type of the conceptual uh, studies and research is still very marginal and needs to be, I think, uh, more, um, you know, uh, favored and... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Do, you don't just mean translation theory then. Well, you can you can uh, call it this way, but you know, translation theory. I mean, would would bring us back to uh, you know to pre prescriptive translation theories, but uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not about that. It is about you know having a discourse, a conceptual discourse, not only on translation but also on translation studies and the way it develops. Sure. Yeah. So uh, a meta-theoretical uh, discourse rather than a theoretical, sure. I would say. You, you spoke also about cultural translation. Yeah. And you described that as, as splitting the discipline or in sort of catastrophic terms. <laughs> Do you really think this? What, what, what's happened, do you think, in, the, in that respect? Well, uh, I think I was... Um, I was a 
very close follower of the discussion that went on, you know, mm. um, uh, after the uh, the the, uh, the article by uh, Budin and Novotny. Okay, so this so is in the journal, the, tra the translation, translation studies, studies around journal, journal. Absolutely, yes. and uh, that was, um, I think, a, a famous moment of uh, you know of the. Uh, of enthusiasm mm -hmm. that went on, you know, uh, and a lot of reactions and very animated reactions and sometimes, you know, cruel, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> representations of, you know, what, of the work of uh, Novotny mm -hmm. uh, or as they said, the, their article there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think... But that's you, good for a discipline. But at the isn't same time... Isn't that sort of stuff you, good for a discipline? And your article, your article was... Uh, was also very much in line because you know uh, you were very much uh, along with uh, Harish Trivedi, uh, a fierce critic of uh, cultural translation, and um, well, I a bad philosophy of yeah, bad philosophy and empiricism. That was All the right, article, but not, but not cultural <laughs> translation. Okay. Yes, right, but, but because cultural but translation, as uh, practiced by uh, by Omi Baba, uh, according to Irish Trivedi, you, whom you supported very much in your article, mm -hmm. is is not is monolingual and you it know, is. very much it hegemonic is. and yes. so on and so and forth. And hegemonic. He's the highest paid professor of English <laughs> in the world. I mean, that's hegemony. Well, uh, well, I'm not defending him. <laughs> okay. I'm defending the concept, okay. uh, which I think is a very interesting. Uh, debut or you know kind of bringing us into uh, f philosophizing sure. the concept of translation and from that sense I I think that it's a very interesting mm. you know uh, uh, you know um, concept to, to, sure. to consider for uh, you know for developing a conceptual um, branch in translation studies I think I'm very much in line with what uh, Malmkia said mm -hmm. uh, about the necessity of having, you know, a space within translation studies that mm -hmm. is a philosophy of translation, just like we have philosophy of history, philosophy of education, sure. philosophy of language, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. I think we ought to, you know, manage a space for philosophy of translation. Yeah, sure. What kind of studies do we think? Do you think we need? You you already have your answer to that, or is it that yeah, simple? Do you think doctoral students should be just doing pure conceptual work? No, I think mm. that we should encourage them to uh, to consider that as one of the choices that they have. The thing is that, you know, uh, the more uh, they are uh, grounded into uh, into empiric empiricity or empirical uh, mm -hmm. data and you know having you know concrete things to look at etc and the more we think that their um their um doctoral research would be well received mm -hmm. and i think that this is a um, presupposition that is i think uh, all too uh traditional probably mm -hmm. and yep. very much kind of uh, uh you know, uh, into the canons of the, you know, Western probably type of uh, scholarship that is, you know, uh, keen on, on, on being very close to what natural science does, which is observation, description, you know, neutrality, objectivity, those kind of things, you know, that, you know, makes uh, scientific research very rigorous mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand, but sometimes, you know, uh, uh, void mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, no originality. Uh, you're taking the same very theory and apply it in hundreds of different uh, locale. And, and then you have, you know, uh, a pretty grounded uh, research. But what about, in fact, you know, the, the um, uh, originality and, and, uh, and creativity in concepts? Mm. You know, um, you know the the fact that sometimes we we carve new uh, concepts or new terms uh, that sometimes follow those concepts, I think is is very very productive and very I think enriching.